It is another great day to be alive. Good morning, friend. How are you? Today is the 28th day of Feb. It is Wednesday already. Man, time goes quickly when we're having fun. I feel like we just started and we're already halfway through the week. We're going to start a new book today together, the book of Philemon. And it's very short. It's one chapter. So we're going to cruise through it together today. And I I just pray, you know, I, was, I just pray that you are doing well. This morning, I woke up with you on my mind and I said, Lord, I can't wait to get to my table or to my desk, rather, where I can spend time with you and spend time with my friend. And so my prayer is that you feel alive and that you're expanding every day and getting to know the Lord Jesus Christ at least 1% more every day, as my nephew John Michael would say. It's a great place to be in the Word of God. It's actually the best place in the world to be. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. And so when you hide yourself in the Word of God, you have exited. You have entered a new kingdom, and it's the kingdom of of God. So let's dive into Philemon today, chapter 1, the only chapter there is, and let the Word of God speak to us. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, also to Apia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains, formerly He was useless to you, but now he's become useful both to you and to me. I'm sending him, who's my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I'm in chains for the gospel, but I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do would not seem forced but be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave as a dear brother. He's very dear to me, but even dear to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more. Prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Epirus, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit.